places match the rugged beauty of Mount Washington, luring climbers and hikers of all stripes, some drawn to its extreme challenges. But it's a place where severe cold and wind can lead to some of the worst weather in the world and turn a critical decision into a life-changing mistake. Hugh Herr has lived with his for over 36 years. At the age of 17, he and 20-year-old climbing partner Jeff Betzer ascended a highly technical route. It was January 1982, and a fierce storm was brewing. We went up Huntington's, a, a ravine, ice gully called Odell's, and we made the mistake of continuing towards the summit. Ever worsening whiteout conditions pushing the pair off course. And it was minus 20 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, the wind chill was horrific. The average depth of snow was to the waist, sometimes to the chest. The path they took forever changing the directions of their lives and of so many others. Phone rang in the middle of the night. Two climbers missing, don't know where. Joe Lentini has been with the Mountain Rescue Service 42 years. He was one of eight MRS volunteers to get the call, including his friend, 28-year-old Albert Dow, another skilled climber and guide. They met with Fish and Game and set out. The winds were so strong, it was probably 25 below. There was fresh snow from the storm the day before, about 18 inches, and it was whiting out so badly that literally, I held my hand arm out like this and I couldn't see beyond there. They headed home after a full day of searching. No sign of Hugh and Jeff, who were trying to survive a second brutal night. My partner and I hugging each other and sharing body heat, we were able to keep our major organs functions, functional. The MRS crew set out again the next day, breaking into teams to search gullies. Albert Dow and his partner Michael spotting tracks near day's end. And then the radio, because we all had radios on crackles, Michael screaming, avalanche, avalanche. And like the world just, just went the other direction. An avalanche had swept the pair of rescuers through a grove of trees. We got up to the site. Michael had stuck a hand out. We probed with avalanche probes looking for, my, for Albert. When we found him, we dug him out. He wasn't breathing. We, we did all we could. Albert Dow, a Tuftonboro native, described as an intensely talented, selfless, and loving son, brother, fiance, and friend, becoming the first and only Mountain Rescue Service volunteer to die during a rescue operation. It would be two more days before the young climbers would be found barely alive. We were s severely hypothermic, so we would often see things that weren't real. But at one point we heard a sound and a human being was standing above us. We weren't sure if it was real or not. They would lose limbs to frostbite, both of Hugh Herr's legs amputated. Rescue team members visited him in the hospital, telling him about Albert. The lives of two young men who would never meet, forever entwined. It was very clear to me immediately that it would be um, disrespectful. Uh, a disgrace to Albert's memory uh, to give up. So I made a, a clear decision to do everything I could do in my life, in his memory, uh, to improve the quality of life of other humans. Dr. Hugh Herr is an MIT professor now, an expert leading a bionics team, developing devices, prosthetic appliances, and interventions to assist people with missing limbs. And in August 2018, just a day before what would have been Albert Dow's 65th birthday, Hugh Herr was again atop Mount Washington, this time inside the observatory's museum, as its extreme weather exhibit was dedicated to Albert Dow III and all rescuers. His loss changed forever how mountain rescues would be conducted, the workers' compensation issues for those rescuers when they go out, and how people work with each other and communicate and conduct those rescues in Mount Washington and the presidential <coughs> ranges. Over three decades later, family, friends, and every rescuer from that fateful day on hand for the tribute.
Albert was on the mountain rescue service because Albert was a humanitarian. He lived his life for the service of mankind. Albert went out in horrendously bad conditions. Why? Because he wanted to? No. But because nobody else could do what he could do. So he went. And that, that is a trait. That is something that we should all be celebrating. Albert Dow was the 95th person to die climbing in our White Mountains. That total now is over 150. So the need today for rescue operations is as great as ever. All mountain search and rescue teams, national forest avalanche and fish and game individuals continue to put their lives at risk for the lost, the injured, even those already passed. Well, the importance of Albert's legacy to our family is that we have safe climbing in the mountains, we support the Mountain Rescue Service, we respect the, the mountain and the surroundings. A legacy also living on in Dr. Hugh Herr. So thank you, Albert, for all your inspiration uh, to me and to so many other people. And thank you so much for venturing out in the young winter of 1982 in search of two lost boys. Thank you.